Hey guys, so this video is a thing I did for school um, not too long ago, uh, specifically talking about red tide and the effects it actually has on the fish. So I hope you guys like this kind of content, getting a little bit more in depth, depth with like the scientific aspect rather than it causes the fish to die. It actually goes into detail on why that happens. With all that being said, I just uploaded a video um, that is going to be only for members of my channel. So I have new tiers available and all that kind of stuff. So if you guys want to go check that out, I would greatly appreciate it. You guys have been awesome. Um, it's I've gotten to a point now where I can actually, you know, spend a little bit more time making sure the channel runs not only smoothly, but the I can make good content for you guys. Um, I drive what's considered full time for Lyft and Uber. So when things weren't going as well, like them to have gone, um, it took a little bit more time out of my day than I could give up to make videos like as consistently as I wanted to. So I had to step back on that a little bit. Things are starting to go a little better now and I need to take that opportunity to make great content for you guys and stuff that I really do enjoy making. Um, more stuff is in the works as well. So if you guys um, like my content and want to help support me, um, I really appreciate it. If you guys could take a look at that, it would be on TikTok, YouTube. Um, I'll also have a Patreon set up and I'll put all that in the link down below so you guys can check it out. However you guys like to look at my content, you know, if you're on YouTube, you probably like to look it on YouTube, but there, as I said, there is a Patreon as well. So without further ado, I got my video about Red Tide coming up right after this, and I already have a video that is up for channel members. So if you are wanting to take a look at that, there's already a video for you to watch, and it's about the potential six mass extinction that's currently going on right now, and I talk a little bit about that. So without further ado, Red Tide and what it actually does to fish. Fish are washing up on the local beaches, coating the beach in the nearby waters, starting to rot and stink and cause all sorts of mayhem. Why would anybody want to get anywhere near that water when something is killing all of the marine life? And it's not just fish. Manatees, turtles, dolphins. Red tide has been a scourge on Florida's waters for a very long time. It's not a new thing. Now we can absolutely get into what causes red tide? Now, red tide in and of itself is an algae bloom. There are a few ways that these algae blooms are created, but they are a natural thing. The issue then comes in where these algae blooms are fed and are stronger than they normally would be due to the introduction of nutrients such as fertilizers, and in some cases, even sewage, because they're full of nitrates. Now, in this particular instance, the algae itself is a species known as Carina brevis. And there are a few different species, but the brevis tends to be the strongest and causes the most devastation. Now, as I said, this algae is naturally occurring, but when it blooms and it gets in the high concentrations, it causes a ton of issues, but we see the end results. How do these issues actually happen and what does the algae do to these animals and also people? Well, K. brevis produces brevitoxin. Now, brevitoxin is a neurotoxin and neurotoxins attack the nervous system. Any system that has excitable cells and excitable cells are cells that when introduced to electricity will activate. These cells include muscle cells, neurons, you know, your brain, your heart, well, being a muscle, the brain will send electrical signals to these cells and cause them to do things. That's how I can move my arms. That's how your heart pumps. That's how you breathe. But what happens when these electrical pulses are disrupted? And that's basically what a neurotoxin will do is disrupt these pulses. But how does it do this? In the case of brevitoxin, let me start off by saying there are multiple types of brevitoxin. It's a very complicated toxin and some are stronger than others. Brevitoxin is made of 50 carbon, 70 hydrogen, and 14 oxygen. At least they're the main one we're talking about today. And what it does is it affects voltage-gated sodium channels. I'm just gonna call them VGS from here on out. Now these signals from the brain 
are sent through these channels. And just like any other cell, these channels are proteins that let certain things in and certain things out and can open and close. And there are sodium channels and there are potassium channels. Now when these signals are sent down the channels, the sodium pump will pull in sodium and the potassium pump will push out potassium, creating a gradient. If the process is going correctly, these pumps will work with each other to make sure that everything moves along smoothly. But when brevitoxin is introduced, it binds to one of the subunits, the A subunit of the VGS, causing it to remain open in a large enough quantity, it will end up stopping the signals from the brain to the other parts of the body where it's needed and this can cause paralysis. And not just paralysis, but a whole host of other things. In particular, your brain won't be able to get the information to you to breathe. It happens with fish too. Fish are in the water and all the things that are in the water are passing over their gills. It blocks off the neural pathways and the fish will just stop breathing. That's in very severe cases. If the concentration is in high enough of an amount, the die off of the algae itself and the decomposition by bacteria that will eat the algae will cause an excess production of carbon dioxide in the water. An excess production of carbon dioxide in the water will cause the fish to not have any oxygen around them to breathe and will also contribute to a mass die off. Oftentimes the fish themselves don't die directly from the brevitoxin. They will die as a side effect of the algae bloom dying off and a lack of oxygen in the surrounding water. But there is also the issue of how the brevitoxin gets passed down through the food web. If an animal ingests the brevitoxin, however that is, an example would be mollusks siphoning the water. The mollusks themselves might be okay, but they get high concentrations of this toxin in their system and the things that eat the mollusks will then have a high concentration of the brevitoxin. That includes humans. Humans usually don't die off because of this, but it can cause acute food poisoning. This specifically is called neurotoxic shellfish poisoning. And if it is bad enough, can lead to death. But what about the animals that are surrounding like manatees or dolphins or any other animal that ends up dying because of the algae bloom? Well, when a dolphin or a turtle eats fish that have high concentrations of this brevitoxin, it builds up in their system and in high enough concentrations can lead to death. When it is ingested, it tends to lead to more gastrointestinal issues, but breathing in brevitoxin, whether it's people on land walking near areas with red tide, when the water crashes on the shore and there's sea foam, it produces a spray and you can breathe it in. The same thing happens with manatees and dolphins when they're swimming through it. They breathe in the brevitoxin that is then scattered in the air and can tighten the airways and eventually cause paralysis that way. If it gets in the airways, it will cause the same sort of effects that it does on the fish. It will block the neurologic pathways and the brain will not be able to communicate with whatever is being affected. As I've stated before, there are different types of this allergy and some of it produces strong stronger versions of brevitoxin than others. It is very difficult to distinguish what is killing the animals in any one particular case. This also helps explain why in some cases manatees and dolphins and other animals will die and in other cases they won't. It's a multifaceted issue and regardless of how they die in those particular cases, whether it be from the brevitoxin or just the fact that there was a huge algae bloom and now there's a lack of oxygen due to the decomposition of the algae, the more consistent blooms are a direct cause of what humans are doing to the environment in these cases. These algaes feed on things that we put in the water in excess, whether it's directly, such as a sewage spill or runoff from fertilizers, or a hurricane comes through and just dumps a ton of extra water and flushes all of those extra chemicals in the water and causes a cascade of all of these issues all at once. Everything in the immediate area is affected and we need to do better.